Hey guys, my name is Hiroko Murakami, back with Novage Academics. Today we're covering a video that's a bit different from our usual lecture videos. We're doing past paper problems for topic A1, paper one. We'll be speed running 15 past paper problems in this video. Um, the reason why is, well, first because it was requested by a lot of our viewers, but also because past paper problem is extremely, extremely useful. Even if you know all the contents, you need to practice how IB tests you and being able to solve a past paper level question is extremely important to getting a six or a seven. So uh, that's why we're doing this video. Now, before we dive right in, I just want to put a copyright disclaimer that all of these videos are past paper problems, which means the content of these questions are copyrighted by IB organization. Uh, we do not intend to infringe upon it. We are just using it for educational purposes for our viewers, and it is under fair use category. So without further ado, let's dive right in, get your question back right next to you, and let's solve these problems. So let's try this topic A1 past paper question one. Okay, if you chose D, then you are absolutely right. The reason why being that we have two balls that are being released from two different balloons. One balloon, I'm going to represent it as a person, is just releasing it from a certain height. The other balloon is actually moving up, which means the trajectory of the ball will not look like this, but rather look a bit like this. Why does it go up? Because the ball is being released with the movement of the ball. So. Uh, with the movement of the balloon, which means it has an initial velocity upwards, same as the balloon, but then it will come down, which means it goes through greater distance, it takes a longer time, and it also has more height to accelerate and reach a faster speed at the bottom. Okay, the only thing that's always constant is the acceleration because acceleration is a gravitational acceleration, which is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. Now let's try this A1, paper one, past paper question two. Okay, so it's asking for a total displacement and velocity time graph. So if you answered B, then you are absolutely right. Why? Because displacement is represented by the area under the curve. And we only want until 1.5 seconds, so we do not care about this one, right? And we also see that these two cancel out because this is negative and this is positive. So what remains is the area here. Now area here is represented by 5 times it by 0 0.5. This is 5. This is 0 0.5. But that would be the rectangle, right? Rectangular shape, rectangular area here. We want half of that. So dividing it by 2, we get 2.5 divided by 2, 1.25 meters. Okay? Now let's try this topic A1 past paper question, paper 1. Now they're asking what the area underneath the curve of a displacement time graph represents. Now we do know that this actually has no physical quantity. This was a trick question. And the reason why being that the only thing we can extract out of this is the velocity, which is a slope. Okay, the area underneath the curve does not matter. Okay, now let's try this past paper question four for topic A1. If you answered B, you are absolutely correct. Uh, the reason why is, well, we have to use SUVAT actually. So let me bring that equation here. One thing that they did give extra is this horizontal distance. We actually don't care about that because the distance traveled vertically is not represented by the distance traveled horizontally. What matters is the four seconds. So we actually know that T is equal to four seconds. We also know that initial velocity is zero second because vertical velocity is zero, zero right? And then we also know acceleration is negative 10 uh, meters per second squared. So we can actually solve for the displacement. So the displacement, we have to use the equation that has all four of this, and that is this one. So S is going to be equal to UT plus 1 over 2 AT squared, which is 0 plus 1 over 2, negative 10, 4 squared. Okay, so as you see, the displacement is negative 80 meters which means the height is just 80 meters, okay? Now let's try this A1 pass paper, question five. Now, if you answered B, you are absolutely right. Again, we have to use SUVAT. So let me paste this again and show you why. So if the ball is being tossed 
with a velocity of 5 meters per second, we know that u is 5 meters per second. We know that acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. We also know that the final velocity is 0 meters per second at the top, right? Regardless of whether it comes down at the top, it's 0. Okay, so now we can actually solve for t using this one. Okay, so we use v is equal to u plus a t. t is equal to 0 0.5 seconds to get to the top. Now, it, to for the ball to come down, it's actually just double, right? So times 2, that gets us to 1 second. Okay? Now let's try this past paper question from topic A1. Now, if your answer was B, you are absolutely correct. And the reason why is because, well, we know that the distance S traveled in time is the area underneath the curve. So if we try to split it, the rate of addition of area is increasing incrementally, right? This area versus this area, which one is bigger? It's the second one. This, how about against the third one? The third one is bigger. Against the fourth one, the fourth one is bigger, right? So as, you, as time goes, the distance covered per second is increasing. That's the whole definition of velocity which means that the distance traveled per second is increasing dramatically. Now, the next line is actually the opposite, right? So it's actually going to look like this, which is B. Now, why doesn't it just come down all the way down like this, you might ask, right? And the reason why is because, well, we're not going backwards, right? If we were going backwards, then our displacement would reach zero like, Z, uh, like C, right? But then we're not going backwards, so that's why it's not C, okay? Now let's try this past paper question from topic A1. Now if you chose C, then you will be correct. This is a bit of a tricky problem. A lot of students get it wrong and put D. But what, well, let's see how the ball moves throughout time, right? Well, we have t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals 3, and t equals 4. Essentially, when we say the fourth second, we want... The, the ball traveling between t equals 3 and t equals 4. How much distance is traveled between 3 and 4? And we need to figure out the velocity at each point, which we can use by acceleration times time. So at, for example, t equals 4, what's the velocity? Well, the velocity is going to be 40 meters per second, about 40 meters per second, right? And at t equals 3, we can do the same thing. It's going to be 30 meters per second, which means on average between t equals 3 and 4, the ball is traveling at 35 meters per second. So within that one second time frame, it travels for 35 meters. Okay, I hope you got the same thing. Now let's try this past paper problem from topic A1. Now if you chose answer A, you are absolutely correct. Why? Because the parachutist is traveling downwards, and downwards and downwards, it's accelerating, right? So up until this point, that's pretty good, right? Because you start from velocity is equal to zero, and then you increase your velocity. Now this, it's actually flipping the positive and negative, because when you're going down, the velocity is negative, but they're using it as positive. As you can see, there is no negative, no negative, right? So that's just being flipped, right? So it's increasing, 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 which means C and D are not impossible. But what happens at time equals t? Well, it's going to have a sudden deceleration because the parachute opens up and it's going to suck in all the air and the air is going to be decelerating due to uh, air resistance, right? So that sudden deceleration is shown by this. That's why it's the answer A, okay? Now let's try this past paper from topic A1. Now if you chose answer B, you will be absolutely correct. We know that the speed of the object when t is equal to 15 is represented by the area underneath the curve of acceleration time graph. We've already covered this a lot in our lecture. So it's going to be the area underneath the curve of this plus this. So let's find out. Well, this one is 5 times by 5. So that's 25. And this one is 10 times 5 divided by 2. Because 10 times 5 would be this area, we want half of it, so we divide it by 2. And that's going to be equal to 25 as well. So 25 plus 25 is equal to 50. Okay? Now let's try this question from past paper for topic A1. Now if you answered A, you will be absolutely correct. Why? 
Well, the reason is actually mostly because the other options are not correct. The way they say accelerating, it, we, we will call it decelerating because acceleration is negative, right? Acceleration is negative. So maybe that threw you off, but we can check that B, C, and D are all wrong, right? Truck is always moving. That's incorrect. At here, velocity is zero, which means it's not moving. C, the truck is always moving in one direction. Not correct because velocity is positive, velocity is negative, which means they switch direction. How about D, the displacement on the truck after time T is zero. Well, this area here is way bigger than this area here, which means we know that D is also incorrect. So the only answer that's correct is A. And we that's because we can take acceleration as a negative value. So it's actually, so it's actually always accelerating negatively, right? We take the slope at any point, it's always a negative value, right? So I hope you got that question right. Now let's try this past paper from topic A1. Now if you answered C, you will be absolutely correct. Okay, why? Well, because we can take a look and see that the displacement time graph is representative of the area underneath the curve, right? Now first, up until this point, we know velocity is constant. If velocity is constant, that means the slope at the displacement time graph is also constant, right? So that actually eliminates a because b c and d have that constant line right but how about after this point well after this point velocity is going down which means slope is slowly approaching zero in fact the slope becomes zero here because velocity is zero right so which one approaches a displacement time graph slope of zero well it's going to be this guy right top uh, answer c because it slowly reaches to the point where slope is zero. This is the point where slope is zero. Okay, so I hope you got that right. Now let's try this past paper from topic A1. Now if your answer was A, you would be absolutely correct. Why? Because first let's focus on speed of the ball. Speed by definition is the absolute value of a velocity. The absolute value of velocity. So I know velocity is negative, but speed is always positive. What's going on? Well, as the ball accelerates, the speed increases, right? Well, velocity will become more negative, but the speed will become more positive. So it's always increasing. That eliminates B and D. How about acceleration of the ball? Well, the acceleration of the ball actually decreases. Why? Because of air resistance, right? As the ball increases in velocity, then the air resistance or maybe the frictional force, you could say, increases as well, which means the acceleration of the ball that's going down decreases because acceleration is a net force. It's competing against the force going down, which is mg, and the force going up, which is the air resistance or the frictional force in air, right? So that's going to be competing as this one increases and this one is constant, acceleration will become smaller. That's why it's A. I hope you got the same thing, okay? Now let's try this past paper problem from topic A1. Now this one is a little bit of a guessing game because we don't know the exact angle. But if your answer was B, you would be correct. Now why? Because x, y direction is four and we need a value on this, on here, right? We know it's not four. Why? Because the x component of x, y, which is given by four cosine theta one, has to be equal to, represented by, x, z, cosine theta 2, right? So if this was 4, right, times theta 2 and 4 times theta 1, they wouldn't balance because look at the length of this, right? So this x, z has to be a smaller value in order for these two values to be equal. So it's either 3, 2, or 1. Now we take a look on this side as well, and we know that it's not 1 because 1 would be too small. We cannot have 4 times sine theta and x, z times sine theta 2, right? It can't be 4 times this value plus 1 times this value. In fact, it can also not be 4 times this value plus 2 times this value because sine theta 1 and sine theta 2 are a decimal value, right? So that's going to bring the overall option down because 5 has to be equal to this, right? So it's likely 3 in this case, okay? Hope you got the same thing. It's a little bit of a tricky question, but I hope you got the same thing. Now let's try this past paper from topic A1. 
And if you chose D, then you'll be absolutely correct. Why? Well, a lot of students actually answer B, but the way that air resistance works and the way that air resistance increases is in a way that it gradually decreases the acceleration of the body. It gradually decreases until the point where you have acceleration is equal to zero. That's where we have terminal velocity, right? And the graph that's showing that is actually D. It's not B, obviously it's not A, and obviously it's not C, because C is actually just increasing acceleration, which is not true, okay? So I hope you got the same thing as the past paper solution. Now let's try another question from past paper, topic A1. Pause the video and give this one a try. Now, if you got C, then you will be right. Why? Because we want to know the speed of the particle at t equals 6, and we know the speed for acceleration time graph is the area underneath the curve. The area underneath the curve here is 6 times 3, that will be giving us the area of this rectangle, divided by 2, right? So that's 18 divided by 2, that's 9. Okay, hope you got the same thing. Now we are ending our first video here, but we do have 15 more questions in the next part of the video, so stay tuned for the next one, okay? Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. We have a lot more lecture style video and content like this in our channel, so feel free to go check it out. Uh, if you're looking for additional guidance like one-on-one -on -one tutors in IB subjects, SAT, TOK essay, IAs writing, etc., then uh, go to our website at novaedgeacademics.com. Fill out the form and get in touch with us. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.